Hey everybody, it's Stereo Police. Subbed in a new amp. Not new, a used old amp. Don't you love VU meters? Love VU meters. I don't know why. <clears throat> Always love VU meters. Big VU meters, like the ones on the Macintosh gear. Um, beautiful. Yeah, so it's New Year's Eve 2018. And uh, as you can see, got a Reconfigured system here. Chilling out with the Forte 3s. <clears throat> Listening to the TAC NT503. Driving the Fisher. Oh, what is that thing? You might think I'm crazy, right? Because this thing is, this is an old Fisher from the early 80s. CA880. Fisher CA880. I love it. I, I think it looks great. <clears throat> I think it looks fantastic. It's just that mixture. You know, this is back in... Uh, I don't know when the Fisher was built, but it had to be the early 80s. And it's got that mixture of the classic VU meters with that uh, LED peak level down there. They started, you know... Audio equipment started making that transition from <clears throat> from meters to uh, flashing lights, LEDs. But um, I like the black, the black faceplate. It's aluminum too. I just like the looks of it. And guess what? I like how it sounds too. <clears throat> it's pretty good condition. I made a video about this Fisher sometime back, maybe about a year ago. Maybe a little more. Yeah, it could be about a year ago. <clears throat> um, and the an eBay purchase came with the matching tuner and matching cassette deck. You know, it was a whole system. And um, I was more interested in the amp, but received it and it had a malfunction. So as part of the video, I tore the thing apart. Man, I really got into it, into it deep, and managed to fix it. And that was a heck of a fix. If you want to watch a fix, man, uh, wow, that was uh, intricate. I was approaching the limits of my uh, ability to keep a steady hand and my ability to see tiny things. Um, but got it fixed and I listened to it for a while then set it aside and got into other things and <clears throat> well to segue from something I was mentioning in my previous video it's it's always fun to sub in different equipment I think it is I think it's fun to sub in different equipment every now and then um, and just listen to something different and and to have something different to look at and you know it's always
to me, it's always enjoyable to listen listen to classic gear, antique gear. Uh, in this case, something from the early '80s. And it's surprising how good some of this stuff can sound. Now, I'm not alleging or claiming, you know, that this is high end. Although, I gotta say, <clears throat> well, part of me, I, I, I should, I should explain this, but. In some of my previous videos, I, I, I talked about having a prejudice, a prejudice against operational amplifiers <clears throat> and, um, and integrated circuits in general in the signal path of an audio device. And that's a, a prejudice that I've had for quite some time. And... I finally, I think I've finally gotten to the point where I'm over that, and it certainly opens up avenues, possibilities, and part of what helped me get over that prejudice against ICs in the signal path is that Akitika, Akatika, whatever, that right there, it's a pretty good, pretty good amplifier. Um, I always thought there was a certain characteristic or a certain sound or a certain compression or something that went along with uh, IC amplifiers, but that Akitika proved me wrong to some degree. Still not as good, in my opinion, as the Yamaha AS1100, but it holds its own and it's enjoyable and it's got its own character. So that got me thinking, well, you know, I want to sub in something else tonight. And uh, the Fisher was sitting on the shelf back there. Hardly, it's, it was pretty dusty. I had to give it a good dusting, and uh, I'm glad it did. I, I like how it looks, and, 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 and boy, it sounds really good. Which makes me wonder sometimes about that, uh, that amplifier challenge from a decade ago um, if you're if you haven't heard about this uh, I, I it's funny I, I, ha I did not hear of, of this till I don't know about six months ago or so I was surfing and it came up in something I was looking at and I'd never heard of it before but apparently it's been around a qu uh, quite a while it's a they call it the Richard Clark amplifier challenge and um, you can, if you just type that in, I think the top Google result will give you a bunch of information on it, but the gist of it is, ah, sorry, I had to hit pause there for a second, I had to, had to get a glass of water, I'm just still almost over with the cold, but still, oof, um, I'm already feeling disjoint tonight, you know, I feel like, uh, I had something to say, that's why I picked up the camcorder, but... Now I wonder what it is I really want to talk about. Um, but that Richard Clark amplifier challenge, the, the gist of it was, or is, and I don't know who this guy Richard Clark is. I didn't do a tremendous amount of research into it. I was just interested in uh, generally what the challenge was. And it was that um, Richard Clark, whoever he is, claimed that amplifiers whether they're audio car amplifiers or home amplifiers, regardless of the technology used, whether they're, they're tube or solid state or anything, that as long as they're, they were, their specifications met a certain criteria, uh, you know, such as you know, lower than 2% total harmonic distortion, I don't know if that's the exact criteria, but it was something like that. Um, and, you know, they were, you know, up to modern specs and they, they were production amplifiers not custom built amplifiers you know and they all had the same you know frequency response characteristics and you know all things as long as their specifications were 
that of a thoroughly modern amplifier with low enough distortion that they all sound the same and that a listener could not tell the difference between two amplifiers. And he had some kind of a test jig where um, the amplifiers were balanced out and level. You weren't allowed to exceed clipping on either amplifier and there was an A-B switch and you could uh, switch between amplifier A and you'd know it was A and then amplifier B and you'd know it was B and then the next switch would be a random choice between A or B and you had to pick which one it was so I'd be listening to the Yamaha that's A and then I'd switch over to B it'd be the Fisher and then the next click of the switch at least I think this is how it works would be one of the two randomly chosen and I'd have to say which one it was, A or B. And you put up like $10,000, and I think the price that went up later. But you had to choose it correctly 12 times without getting it wrong, and then another set of 12. So a total, four, a total of 24. And if you put up your own money against him, okay, you, 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 know, you have to get 24 right to win the $10,000. Uh, without getting it, one of them wrong. And he alleged that, hey, if amplifiers are so radically different, that shouldn't be a problem. Uh, no more than uh, being able to tell the difference between an apple and an orange 24 times. And uh, more than a decade later, no one, there's been thousands of people that have tried it, and apparently no one has won the challenge. And there are different variations where if you want to put up some of your own money, then it wouldn't be, you know, it wouldn't be, you, don't, you wouldn't have to get 24, you'd go down to 12 or down to as low as 6, depending, 6 right, uh, two sets of 6 right. Um, and uh, if you put up a lot of money, and you were willing to lose. And you know, that just helped to weed out the people who weren't serious about it. And you could bring your own amp. Uh, you could bring your own amps. You could even bring your own speakers. Anyway, there's more to it. It's an interesting uh, challenge. And um, so why did I bring that up? Well, it's funny that I, I have, a, I would insist that I can tell the difference between certain amps, given that challenge. I have heard amps that are just horrible in my opinion, fatiguing, flat, lifeless, tonally imbalanced. And I, it, I swear, I had this amp once, okay, over, you're looking at over there below the Akitika is the uh, A1000, which is a wonderful amp. I love it. And I also had uh, a cousin of that A1000. It was a receiver called, I think it was called the R, designated the R9 also a Yamaha also class A auto class A with a class A button on it with similar circuitry although I studied the schematics and there, there were there, there were differences but um, and I thought that receiver would be worth a rebuild and a recap and you know, it was a beautiful looking receiver from the front and uh, when I received it I bought it from eBay and I made a video about it at one point um, and mm, uh, as soon as I turned it on, everything worked fine, no hum, no buzz, everything was perfectly functional, but it just sounded horrible. Didn't want to listen to it. In fact, I didn't, at that point, I didn't even want to, you know, put any work into it or time and effort into it. It just sounded crappy. And I've had others like that. And I would swear I, that if I had that R9 and I put it up against the Yamaha AS1100, I, I, I swear I'd be able to pass that challenge unless I had a problem with my ears on that particular day. Um, I would swear, I, I, they're just, you know, whenever I sub in an amp, okay, like when I, when I went from the Yamaha to the Akitika a, couple, uh, a week or so ago, I noticed a difference right off the bat. Um, and when I went from the Akitika to the Fisher today, I noticed a difference. Not a big difference, but there are subtle differences, and I have a, I would have a hard time verbalizing what what, the, what those differences are. Um, 
mostly very sensitive to high frequencies and I can tell when an amp gets tinny or harsh or can't reproduce cymbals or hi-hats or upper registers very you know I, I can tell I notice that stuff um, but mm, I would love to be able to just for my own edification my own, just for fun be able to rig up a little system here where I can switch between amps and, and have someone do the switching for me so I wouldn't know and do that challenge and in fact I might I might try that in the new year just to see wow it'll blow my mind if it turns out I can't tell the difference between the AS1100 and well let's say the Akitika uh, it would blow my mind I wouldn't know what to think it would rock my world if I if I it turns out to be true that would mean there's something else, something psychological going on. And wow. Hmm. Now certainly that amplifier challenge wouldn't hold up the speakers. Okay, speakers are vastly different from one another. That shouldn't be a problem whatsoever, right? But he and of course they're vastly different from one another in spec specifications and you know all kinds of abilities to reproduce, you know, the lows and every just they're very different. So that wouldn't hold up with amplifiers. Hmm. Blow my mind. So I might try that uh, in the new year, but yeah, I got off on a big tangent there. But but now I kind of want to know. I don't know how I I was I was thinking about that today, and I guess I think the reason. I don't know how that thought came into my mind, but it was really about kind of what I wanted to make this video about tonight. Um, and back to where I began. The fun of subbing in gear. Um, and prejudice. Okay, so I, I overcame my prejudice of... Mostly, mostly overcome my prejudice of integrated circuits. That Fisher sounds very good, and I, I can tell you, because I've studied the schematic, I worked on it, it has one IC, it has one op amp in the pre-amplifier section. The amplifier is fully discrete. Um, and it's got this op amp, in fact, I this Fisher is so good, I'm considering upgrading the op amp in the uh, pre-amp section uh, to a high, high quality uh, audio op amp. There are a couple companies that make them very good quality audio op amps. Um, uh, where did I? Oh, I'm on a tangent. Okay, so um, one of the perhaps hidden or underrated, I hate that word underrated. Um, well, there's no word for it. One, one you know, as we, as we all progress in the hobby, we kind of change courses and kind of change directions along the way sometimes. And I'm at the point. Um, the direction I'm going right now is is no longer seeking to improve upon a system that I think is is fantastic. I'm there. Okay, that would be the AS1100, the, the TAC, um, my Yamaha tuner, my project turntable. And the uh, Forte, the mm, you know, the Cornwall threes that are behind the Forte threes, right there, the big speakers behind. It. That's my main system, and I'm not seeking to improve that under any circumstance, at least right now. But where the direction I'm taking is more or less the trying to find uh, classic equipment, low budget, you know, junk store deals, uh, which I, I shop at a lot of junk stores. Uh, looking for audio equipment, not just anything, but things that I think will be surprising. And uh, and then just getting them, bringing them home, giving them a bath, if there's something minor wrong with it, fixing it, and then putting it in the system to see how good it is. And sometimes you will be shocked. You could find some mid-grade consumer components such as this Fisher 
mid-fi, even back in its day, it was just mid-fi, you know, it wasn't high-end by a long shot. And you'll find, you know, a component that's just surprisingly good. And sometimes with equipment, I don't care what price range, there's just an X factor. An X factor of that, you know, this thing, whatever it is, really shouldn't be this good. But it is. You know, why is it this good? Is it, is it the design? Was it in meant to be this good or was it an accident of some synergistic combination of circuitry uh, you know was it a was it just an accident it just turned out to be good it wasn't supposed to be this good everything just came together um, serendipity and, and that happens sometimes and I believe it's happened with the Fisher it just sounds across the board I won't get into detail do a review on it but it's it's just it's got excellent bass control the mid range is, range is very warm it's got no coloration tonally balanced the uh, high end that I'm sensitive to the high frequencies are not harsh at all they're sweet I mean everything is just right on and and again I've told you before I've heard amps that I've put in the system and five minutes later it's out I don't want to hear it anymore um, but I just love finding those surprises and back to prejudice okay so I remember when I first uh, fixed this amp and 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 I you know I had to pull the schematic and I noticed the op amp in there I didn't know there was an op amp in there when I bought it and then immediately the prejudice kicked in I'm like okay I'll go ahead and fix it and I'll keep it around as a paperweight and, you know but I can't take it seriously because it's got an op amp in there and so now that I've overcome that prejudice, I decided today to put it back in the system, um, and and I'm just blown away by how good it really is, and I love how it looks. And uh, it's just going to be fun to listen to this tonight on New Year's Eve. I'm not going out to any parties; those days are over with. Okay, <laughs> I'm staying home. All the drunks on the road, forget about it. Um, so I'm just going to have a nice session. My wife is coming down here. We're going to do some uh, listening to some classics, probably some Motown uh, tonight. Um, and uh, we're just going to enjoy the music and enjoy company and conversation and in front of the stereo, not the TV. Um, so one of the things in, in the new year, if, if you know, for you for my fellow equipment files that's another thing I'll go ahead and admit it I'm not on the fence anymore I'm an equipment file uh, equipment file 70 80 percent of the time an audio file 20 percent I don't do much critical listening anymore I don't sit down I, I, I it's mostly I'm with people I mean, or when I'm listening to music or it's background music or I'm sitting down here reading while there's music um, in fact, I haven't done much critical listening at all since I've owned the Cornwalls, but what I have done is I've listened to some live concerts through the Cornwalls and cranked them up. That's when that wall of sound appears, and it's just marvelous, and that's when you takes your breath away. That's not really critical listening. That's wanting to have a live concert in your, um, in your home. I've done that with them, but not a whole lot of critical. So my listening habits are kind of changing. And back to the subbing and equipment. So in the new year, for you guys that are really into this, I'm telling you, it's you know junk shops, antique stores, uh, rummage sales, uh, what, Goodwill stores, you know places like that. You know you can find a little gem. That's where that that turntable that I made the video about um, that I need to make a part two about that JVC linear tracker. My belts came in. Well. There's the belts right there. Um, the main platter belt didn't come in, but the belts for the uh, the carriage came in. And I've got a stylus on order and and uh, the platter belt on order, so I'm not going to make part two right now, but waiting for all that to come in. I'm hoping that's going to be a surprise too. So, um, you know, that's it's sort of a tangential part of the hobby 
and it's a part where you can discover you can get surprisingly good equipment um, from some of these classic mid-fi devices um, from the 70s, 80s, maybe 90s um, and it's kind of satisfying and I enjoy that aspect of the hobby. It's, again, it's a tangential part of the hobby but it can be fun, you know, cleaning something up and, you know, firing it up and expecting the worst and getting something amazing. Of course, there's always that risk where you put it like my R9 when I bought that R9 Yamaha. I put that in the system and it immediately hit me. I've just wasted money, wasted an effort on this. But that's just the way it goes. Hey, I sold it on eBay. I'm gone. Um, maybe someone else's ears will tell a different story. But So that's kind of the direction I'm going in the new year. And uh, I love it. It's just another part of the hobby that, for those of you guys who are into it, it's, you know, maybe some, some of you guys already do that. But um, So prejudice. Okay, back to prejudice. So I've overcome my prejudice of ICs, but I've gained a new prejudice uh, that's going to be hard to overcome. And that's a prejudice of horns, of compressor, compression driver horns for mid-range and uh, tweeter. Um, and I say that because I was in an audio shop a couple of days ago, and somebody was demoing some, uh, uh, oh, oh man, what the name of that company it was, uh, Sonus Faber, is that how you pronounce it? Sonus Faber, I think they're Italian speakers. I'm not too familiar with them, but they were these were pretty big, pretty large speakers, and um, they were they were about three thousand dollars each. I can't remember exactly thirty three hundred dollars each, something like that. Six thousand a pair, and uh, and uh, I kind of hung out in the in the shadows and and listened and. Um, and I just, I at first, you know, it, my, it hit me that, okay, yeah, these sound good in all the ways that, that a speaker like this is supposed to sound good. Silky smooth, I mean, the, you know, impressive high frequencies and, you know, the bass was there. But, man, something was totally missing. It just sounded uh, lifeless because the last memory I had in my head was of the Cornwall 3s. And so the point is, I think I've gained a new prejudice, and I probably shouldn't have that. But yeah, right now, I'm into horns. And I realize a lot of folks out there have already been into them and discovered their attributes. attributes. But um, I was kind of getting into them when I had those Alltech 19s, but they kind of gave a bad taste in my mouth because of the coloration of that, uh, that the Alltech 19s and the fatiguing aspect of at least the ones I own. Maybe there's something wrong with them. Um, but since I've recently started purchasing the clips, and I've changed my mind. And uh, I'm into it. So got rid of an old prejudice, gained a new one. Uh, anyway, this was really just a whole lot of nothing. I, didn't, I guess I, it was, I didn't really have a whole lot to say, but I wanted to wish everyone a happy new year. And um, and uh, it's been fun, enjoyable. You know, I've got several hobbies. One of them is photography. So I kind of go in and out of uh, zones at different times. And sometimes I go for months without making a video. And sometimes I just feel like making one or two or three. I'll be back in the new year with a video about that turntable, that JVC linear tracker. That's another one. It's not supposed to be good. It'll defy all odds if I like it. Um, and another thing I like about this is, you know, of, of you know getting junk store deals and bringing home and listening and find the, the real gems that are surprisingly good. Uh, it's it's anti-elitist goes against the grain but it really is about what you what we individually find pleasing 
and uh, there's some aspect of that that I really, really enjoy. Again, the uh, aspect to finding equipment that's not supposed to be good that turns out to be good. And I really, really am looking forward to coming up with my own amplifier challenge down here. I've got to know now because, mm, you know, this the Akitika is so good, but the Fisher is is even better. And again, I said it five times. This is this Fisher is not supposed to be that good, but damn it is. And I'm telling you, if you guys like the looks of it, you know those VU meters and uh, you know that black aluminum faceplate, and and I think it's beautiful. Piece of history. Um, but I'm telling you, it it sounds good. Now, I don't use it's got loudness on there. I don't I don't use that. Bass and treble uh, are are flat. You know, I bypass all you know all that stuff is you know, totally flat. It's just a great amp for what it is. It's an integrated amp, and I'm telling you, it sounds good. Take my word for it. Unless you get one that's was repaired improperly or something's blown in there or not functioning right, but um. So anyway, this is a video about a whole lot of nothing. Just me talking. I'll see you all in the new year. Uh, happy New Year. And ciao.